Aloha. Welcome to the Hawaii Urban Gardener. Another episode. Today we're going to do carrots in a five gallon bucket. And of course this whole channel is about just growing things in a small space, whether you live in an apartment, a townhouse, or just have a house with a small yard. So I'm going to show you how to amend the potting soil or potting mix or whatever soil you have to put it in the bucket because with carrots it's a little bit different. So let's get to it. All right, so what I did was I halved the bucket. This is a five gallon food grade bucket. Um, I put half of the potting mix in and did the same thing that I'm gonna show you right now. And I'm doing the other upper half. So just fill the bucket to the halfway mark with the potting soil and do exactly what I'm doing right now. And then you'll repeat with the other top half. And of course, some people will say, well, why don't you do it in a big bucket or a wheelbarrow? But um, this is for urban gardening, and if you don't have a big yard to get a big bucket or a wheelbarrow, such as if you live in an apartment or a townhouse such as I, um, this is what you're going to have to do. Um, you could get a wheelbarrow, but I don't have any storage for that. So this is cocoa core. You can use sand if you want. We live in Hawaii and have a lot of sand, but you must be careful if you take it from the beach. One, it may be illegal to take sand from the beach, and two, the saltiness of the sand might kill your plants. So if you do get it from the beach, if you have a legal way of doing it, you must probably wash it really well or let it soak for a while to get all the salt out. I have a lot of this cocoa core that I use sometimes for my hydroponics if I don't use rock wool. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, break it up into fine pieces. And this acts just like sand and the reason is when you're growing carrots, they like a loose, loomy soil, and they don't like compact clay-like soils. Um, it's hard for them to grow their taproot. This way, this will loosen up the soil and the potting mix even further, making it easy for them to grow. And it breaks apart pretty easily into this fine dust. And if you're wondering what cocoa core is, it's just the shredded, finely shredded outside or the husk of the coconut. And it's usually pressed into these big blocks and uh, you can wet it or soak it, but I can break it apart easily while it's dry. And that way I can mix it in and it gets much more looser as you can see. So it'll be easy and fluffy for the carrots to just grow their tap roots really quick and with ease. You can find sand at um, a hardware store. I just came from Lowe's, but the sand that they were selling because of s supply shortages, they only had paver sand and that was a huge bag and you don't need that much of a bag because I don't know what you would do with the rest of the sand. Um, and it was about 22 to $25. So it's much cheaper to get cocoa core or find the sand yourself if you live in a beach area. But I'm just gonna mix halfway of the bucket since the bottom is mixed. And remember, I did the bottom half the same way and I'm just mixing all the potting mix with this cocoa core. Next, I'm going to do things different with carrots. Carrots are a root, um, so they like their potassium and their phosphorus to grow strong roots. So I'm gonna use Dr. Earth's uh, organic tomato and vegetable and herb fertilizer. So for this top half, I'm using maybe half a cup. I'm just gonna mix it in there. And the reason I'm picking this fertilizer is it has nitrogen but a very low nitrogen and the reason being is because like I said carrots are a root you want them to form strong roots and the nitrogen will make very leafy greens on plants so if you put too much nitrogen they're going to have very nice carrot tops but you're going to have a small carrot and that's the part you want to eat and as you notice I usually put blood meal in here but I'm not um, what I mean is in all of my potting mixes like my tomatoes I put blood meal in all but not in this because blood meal is pure nitrogen 
So just for a little bit of micronutrients, it still has a little bit of nitrogen, but not too much. I'm just gonna put maybe half a handful of worm castings and some bone meal, which has a uh, low nitrogen as well, but a lot of ph phosphate and calcium, probably half a handful. That's why you don't want to put cow manure or chicken manure if you're doing a mixture like this for carrots only or any root vegetable, radishes, stuff like that, because the chicken manure and the cow manure has way too much nitrogen. So you're going to have pretty carrot tops, but nothing to eat because the roots won't grow as healthy. So remember, for root vegetables, you want phosphate and the potassium. And there it is, pretty loose soil. And we're gonna see how many carrots we can fit in here. So today I'm gonna try these Amaya Gardener tender sweet carrots. I have done the Danvers carrots from Hudson Valley. Those came out great, but I did do it directly sowing it into my yard's soil. And here in Hawaii, we kind of have clay soil. I'm up in the mountains, so it's very clay-like. And even though it was pretty hard and I tried to till it, it came out pretty good, but they came out still kind of small. So let's try these. These are a little longer, and that way they have freedom to grow longer in this um, loose soil. So when you get carrot seeds, they're very, very tiny. Sometimes you can get them pelleted where they're coated in a clay-like thing so you can kind of see them better so you know where you're putting them. So I'm gonna put a bunch in my hand. They're very, very tiny. And I pre-poked some holes with a little stake or chopstick that type thing. It's like a bamboo stake. And we're gonna put one in each hole. And you're gonna use maybe one fourth of an inch to a half inch, no more than that. Don't make it too deep. And we'll go from there. So after we put them in, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit more potting mix right on the top, just for a thin cover. And then we're gonna mist them with some water. Carrots all set in. I just use a little bit of a mist on my settings of my hose and just water them in just a little bit. And I use the mist because I think if you use a shower or even a um, one of those waterers, sprinkling cans, the seeds are so tiny and gentle that they might just move or float away. So a misting is nice when you're watering it at first until they start sprouting out. All right, it's been two weeks. It was a slow germination for sure. But it did rain a lot here over the past few weeks, and I'm not sure. Usually that makes plants sprout up, but there wasn't much sun, so maybe that's why it was slow. But we've got all of them in there. Lots of carrots, and they're all popping up. And hopefully the slugs won't get to them. I'm going to put some tin foil around the sides of this bucket, because if you don't know, slugs hate touching metal. And the crinkliness when you crimp it... Um, it's pokey to them and they don't like that feeling so hopefully that deters them away from my carrot bed and I'll come back and update you later. Here's another update on our carrots. Growing great. I have a few spots that didn't grow some carrots whether the seeds didn't germinate or not but I think it'll be fine because we have all of these ones in the middle popping up don't want it to get too crowded but it's doing great and I'm not sure if I mentioned because it's been so long um, if you're wondering why I have this tin foil over here you just get aluminum foil put it around any of your pots and that prevents the slugs from eating your seedlings or any of your plants that they like to eat they once they touch the metal for some reason they don't like any kind of metal at all uh, it, they just go away so they can't cross this path so far it's been successful. They haven't eaten my carrots because when I planted them in the ground, 
a lot of my seedlings uh, would be dead the next day. So that's a tip for you. And a cheap tip because everybody's got aluminum foil in their kitchen. Here's the carrots that I planted and showed you doing well. I think they should be ready by mid-October to be picked. So that's pretty much it, how to grow carrots in a bucket. Uh, maybe later on I'll show you uh, when I harvest them, but they sprouted up pretty quick and they're doing well so far. So if you are going to continue fertilizing your carrots, just be sure that you don't give it too much nitrogen and look for a, a fertilizer with um, a lot of the N numbers in the NPK, the phosphate and potassium. Um, that Dr. Green's Earth fertilizer I used initially in the soil is fine. You can continue to use it after a couple months. Just reapply or make their um, compost tea with it. And um, you should be fine and have some awesome carrots. Uh, in terms of slugs, you may want to plant during um, a drier time period. Uh, not too hot though, but um, what I'm saying is when I started in the spring in Hawaii, it was constantly raining and all the slugs came out. You can do slug prevention and stuff, but uh, the slugs do love the little carrot sprouts. So by the time they even uh, sprout up to even get to maturity, they'll be dead because the slugs are going to totally eat the carrot tops. So just be careful. Do it when you kind of check the weather and make sure that it's not going to be too rainy and that'll be just a nice sunny day so that way they have a good start and they'll grow more mature because once they're mature the slugs aren't going to attack your carrots uh, that way you have a good start to them and you don't have to worry about the slugs eating your seedlings so that's it for today's episode good luck with your gardening and i'll see you next time god bless